So I'm Sergeant America, as most people will know, but I have a guest here, Echo Limits. And so just so everybody, everybody knows, I absolutely owe my career to Echo Limits and many other streamers because I based myself off of them when I used to watch their, their content. And I got really lucky to have come across the opportunity to work with Echo Limits on uh, Tilt Games and many uh, many other occasions and just talking to them. And especially now, uh, having them as a guest here over at Valhalla Esports and for this recording and everything, it's just absolutely amazing to have somebody that uh, I looked up to that along with uh, Stone Mountain 64 and so many people that I've been able to work with so far. Um, I just want to point out real quick that Echo Limits started off streaming. Um, he got to 100K or over over 100K uh, followers on Twitch. And then he moved on to some business ventures, which I want him to actually get into when he breaks the ice. Uh, but so far... It's going amazing for him, and I, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to bring him in here today is actually to talk to people and get some get some uh, information out there because just streaming is a terrible idea. I've started a podcast, I've started a YouTube, I've I I so I started streaming, and I, when I was streaming at the beginning, I was going for twelve hours a day for seven days a week. And my wife hated that and was getting mad at me. And it was actually, it actually took until Echo Limits told me, that's a terrible idea for me to stop doing that. Uh, uh, yeah. So in all reality, it takes until somebody tells you, hey, that's stupid before you change yourself. But I'm going to let, uh, I'm going to give the reins over to Echo Limits real quick so he can actually introduce himself and give his credentials. I did. I did. No, sure. Um, you know, I'm glad I had an impact uh, in being able to, help you define your own content and decide, you know, what are the good directions. At the end of the day, you know, we can only speak from our experiences or things we've learned or heard from other people. And ultimately, I tried to just put all that together for the future develop, uh, you know, uh, future content creators that come out. Just because there's, there's a lot of tried and true. And there's a little bit of fair, fair bit of mysticism as to what happens within the industry and say like, hey, you know, what, what could make you a great influencer because you think about it like people who've made it big um sometimes understand that why should i help someone to be my competition right and at the end of the day i i look at it not so much it's more about um i i guess you know i'm 32 but um my focus to create content was in my 20s and once i've kind of grown out of it and decided well my next step in industry is uh, professionally in it. Now I look to help influencers develop themselves uh, and become professionals eventually in industry as well. Um, but yeah, I wanted to start off by saying thanks for having me here and uh, it's been a pleasure uh, to talk to you guys and answer your questions about whatever I can. Um, and it's a pleasure to just know that, you know, I've had an impact on someone who's now putting together an esports. Uh, um, company here to help other streamers become better um, better competitors and just more aware of what are the possibilities within the game industry and that's really key so what you're doing is pretty amazing and i'm glad to be a part of it um go ahead uh if you have a question yeah i was actually i was going to say it's actually thor's esports community i'm just head of uh content creation over here with a few friends that i brought into it so i just yeah i just help out with the content creators here but thor is actually in here right now and he's he's okay. the big overseeing daddy of uh <laughs> of this esports team, which is well, it's a pleasure amazing. to meet him, um, for sure. And you know what you guys are trying to put together, it's not easy. You know, community management or just uh, bringing value to other content creators of hey, whether it is through these uh, talks with creators who've been in the industry or are in the industry in other ways, or I'm sure you guys have a lot more ways to help people. Um, so to pre preface like what we're going to be talking about today, um, just to kind of give you guys an idea of who I am, uh, where I started, and, and uh, then we'll jump into all the topics that Sergeant America has put together. Um, my name is Eric. Uh, I go by Echo Limits online. And uh, yeah, I've been constant creating for uh, probably eight years, you know, since the PlayStation 4 came out. And, and uh, 
the idea was like one day I just looked at my controller. I was like, what happened to the start and select button? Why is there share and options now? And eventually, you know, I clicked that share button and I learned what Twitch was. And those were, that was the, the heydays of like, well, you know, the, the beginning days of Twitch. Like people didn't know what the platform was and uh, people were streaming whatever they thought was appropriate or inappropriate. You know, there was no rules. Um, and even back then, there were no rules on how to become a partner streamer. So I've been a partner streamer for years now. I believe it's over five years. And uh, even then, you know, I applied like 10 times to become a partner streamer because there were no guidelines. Even though I was holding an audience of 300, 400, um, they could have just said no because, oh, well, and no explanation. And so now I think the industry is maturing. You know, people know what the criteria is to become a partner, uh, to become an affiliate. Affiliate wasn't even a thing, right? Um, and, uh, you know, the platform has so much more to give. But the one big thing it doesn't is it doesn't have discoverability. Um, and so there's, there's a lot that we can go dive into that. But back when I was a streamer uh, with years ago when when i started what you described was something that people did often you know stream for 12 hours 24 hour streams 40 hour streams like who knows some people try to do some ridiculous things and um these things worked you know they got people hyped people followed and they were like oh my god you see that guy because it was novel nobody had tried these things or people kind of just did them here and there um but when me and you connected and I heard you saying that, and this was years later, and I'm just like, wow, well, that's not a good idea. Because I think content creation has shifted away from quantity to quality. You know, you yeah, have some few years ago kind of success stories. The, the success stories aren't from quantity. They're just quality. Like um, Dr. Disrespect comes to mind, for instance, just because... Uh, he was someone that was known industry. He worked in industry and then he quit and he went back to consecration. But his thing was, I'm going to have this persona. I'm going to do this all up. And um, it, I'm going to feed people this information, this, this show, and it's going to be only a few hours and people are going to want to tune in next time, you know? Um, and I think that's what the industry is now. You look at someone like the sushi dragon, um, amazing content you know if you're not familiar with who that is and you're listening and you're uh, into twitch creation and live editing and everything else check out what this guy's doing i mean it's ridiculous uh, the quality of his content so um i would like to preface and say like yes i'm an, an old school guy <laughs> um and uh, i've seen the shift in industry i know it's for the better and i also think it's for the healthier of content creators because even i myself spent a lot of time streaming and you know i started out as a teacher and in my day job was teaching and my nightlife was come home five o'clock after work 4 30 eat some dinner and six start streaming from six to twelve six to one and i did this for years and, and um you say your your wife was upset with you and yeah. at that time my 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 girlfriend was upset with me you know and these are just things that aren't healthy they're not healthy for anyone not yourself that's not a good habit and uh, ultimately it it's one of those things that forces a change so, yeah if you're if you're putting um, yourself to where you're not ha where you're not healthy because you're just doing so much work then your content's going to just take an absolute it's going to suffer yeah. and everything else, your, your own attitude and everything else. But, you know, we live and we learn. And so I wanted to first start the conversation by letting people know that um, if I have an opinion or if I have some information or some advice, know that it comes from I've been there, I've done it, or I've seen people close to me do it. And uh, it's an informed opinion. At the end of the day, it's an opinion. But it is an informed one. So, um, you know, when you do something for a long time, you start to see what are good ideas, what are bad ideas, and you connect the dots. And so to fast forward to today, um, I don't 
create content anymore, but I am the head of marketing at Tilt Games. And it was one of those efforts of meeting two guys who had a great company and they were helping developers uh, reach Asian markets. And I came up to them and I said, hey, why don't we just reach all the markets? Why don't we go global? And uh, they're like, okay, Eric, well, what does that look like? Well, why don't we market through Twitch streamers and influencers? And so uh, a lot of that was kickstarted by just my hunch and feeling and saying, hey, I know this space. Let's get it all connected. Let's build something that has value uh, for developers and other publishers. And let's market games. So that's who I am. And that's what I'm doing now. Um, I hope uh, that gives you guys listening a, a basis for what we can talk about today. And uh, Sergeant America, I'll let you jump into the next topic or how you want to structure this. Oh, yeah, most definitely. I'm actually kind of excited because I get to use my college degree in history because it was emphasized <laughs> in, uh, in uh, primary source uh, interviews. So I never, I haven't been able to do those in years. Anyways, uh, so we already got into kind of like what got you to start. You kind of just did it mostly on accident, but what kept you going? What kept you streaming when you started? You know, I had a lot of support, you know, even, even who I was with, you know, closest friends, um, relationships, uh, people supported me and they were just like, if this is what you're passionate about, then do it. Um, and that comes first, you know, people have to believe in you that are very close to you. And then eventually you meet some friends who you play with and they become really close. I'll be, you know, everyone's on the internet, but you feel that closeness. They become your best friends and they want you to succeed. And they're like, Eric, why don't you get a blue Yeti microphone instead of this crappy headset you're using? And here's a better camera and here's this. And, um, and I, and all of that motivated. Plus, it's motivating when you see growth in your own channel. Like you went from 10 concurrents to 25 to 100 to 150 and so on. And uh, one of the biggest motivating factors too is, is once you start getting the eyes of the companies that you play their games. And EA, you know, invited me to go see Battlefield 1. And I'm like, wait a minute, but I'm just this dude, you know. Um, and then it all kind of accumulates up into knowing that you're you're on the right trajectory, right direction, and um, you, you're enjoying what you do. That, that, I mean, if you're not enjoying what you're doing in any aspect, no matter what job you're doing, in all honesty, you probably shouldn't be doing that job. Uh, because in the end of the day, oh. if you're not enjoying it, you're not putting in the work that you're supposed to. You're kind of just uh, giving half half the half the job. The it's not good. So what was your favorite part? Obviously, probably getting invited to Battlefield 1 and the, the support. But then on the other side of that, what was what was your least favorite part? What uh, actually got you to not want to continue? And how many times did it really bother you? So I'm going to kind of jump that question into two sections. Um, because I feel that there is a favorite uh, physical part and a favorite... Um, mm, uh, I guess metaphysical part where it's like because what we do as a when you're a content creator you're, you're doing th things and things are affected in the real world right in front of you and there are things that are affected that are virtual well I should say because you're connecting with people online and there's a virtual aspect to it but it isn't in person so to tell you like one of the favorite physical things would be like the opportunities to go hang out with other YouTubers other Twitch streamers at events, whether it is E3, whether it is GDC, um, PAX or something, and you get to meet people. Um, and once, you know, you're a Twitch partner, you get invited to the parties or something like that, where it's a Twitch party, but you're, you're basically hanging out with your peers. And that's, that's something that I've always loved meeting people who do what I do are excited about the games that I like specifically, like, you know, I was really into battlefield. So, um, it was great to meet all the YouTubers that covered Battlefield and get just sit down and jam and talk with them about it. And that was like the physical aspect that is great. Um, of course, you know, the, the negative downside of, you know, physical things like that is um, 
you, you do have to travel quite a bit and not always is that a good thing specifically if you're um i guess if, if you're in a deep relationship with someone and you know you don't you can't dedicate that time to that person because um people don't realize that well may, maybe some of you guys do is consecration as your own business is pretty expensive right you have to spend a lot of money on all these peripherals and things like that um and oftentimes even the travel expenses like i've went to gdc i've went to paxes and i went to these things out of my own pocket or you know i raised the money through my own channel i said hey guys we have a donation goal i really want to go here and so that would be the negative part because a you know these travel things are expensive and the, there were times where I slept in terrible hotels just because it was like in the middle of San Francisco and 250 a night. And uh, otherwise, you know, you're paying $800, $500 a night. The mattress is mostly, high. mostly cockroaches. Oh, I don't know what it was, but <laughs> I just, I didn't even like tuck into that bed. And that's the, that's the real fact. Um, I think, I think that night was like $180 a night and it was in, in the middle of San Fran, but, the other alternative is like okay you're you're living out but then every single day you have to like uber in so i was just like ah oh, no i want to be in the city because i want to be close i just want to walk there um yeah maybe sure there could have been different solutions but at the end of the day time is valuable to me and if i'm spending time in san francisco i wanted to be close to the venue to go to as many events as possible and meet developers meet potential um partners that i may be able to cover the game help them I was I was always very passionate about helping developers and kind of makes sense where I am today. Um, but that's the good and the bad of what the physical is. And then you can now, I can shift over to the, the virtual. The good and the virtual is I've literally, uh, one time I had a layover in Lisbon in Portugal. And I was just like, ah, oh, man, seven hours, missed my flight. What am I going to do? And I put it on Twitter. And somebody I've been gaming for a year with, like he watched my stream and everything else um his uh, the quantum gamer online and he he messaged me he's like dude i'm in lisbon where are you i'm like i'm at the airport he's like yo can i hang out i'm like dude let's hang out and you know how <laughs> profoundly cool it is to be able to do that like yeah. go to another country and have somebody know who you are in a connected way and just sit there and just just jam and have a cup of coffee or something and that virtual space is when you meet these people who are really great and supportive um fun to be with become your friends and you can go years talking not talking just seeing what everyone's doing when you when you sit down and catch up it feels like a good old friend and that's a that's the good of the virtual but life is balanced and there's always a bad and within the space and I've been I've been under the gun a lot of things uh, when it comes to like trolls, you know. But it depends on what games you're a part of. And some games have toxic um, communities, and they just don't want to see you succeed. And it's it's not so much about like, hey, did I anger someone? It really is just people going through a lot of crap in their life, and some bring it out on others, you know. Um, and I've even had that, you know, I've had people call me in the middle of the night because they found out my phone number, you know, and that's weird, you know, call my brother, like, that's weird, like, why would you do that? He has nothing to do with, like, any content creation that I create, why are you bothering someone else? And so there's the, the downside of the virtual, and overall, you look at the big picture, and there's pluses, there's minuses, physical, and there's pluses and minuses that are virtual. So um, hopefully that dives in a little deeper than what maybe you were expecting, but I do think that there's it is important to distinguish between the two. Oh, that's, that's, definitely, that's definitely amazing. It, it definitely fi uh, fills in gaps of, the, of just overall where the question didn't... Uh, I mean, I love that. I, I, I love being able to get more to the to the question than I actually was uh, necessary, you know, because in the, at the end of the day, we're here to give people the absolute most out of this uh, opportunity to give people the absolute 
best of both worlds, the, the positives and negatives, and you're, a, you're able to help out in so much. And you put up an interesting point about the trolls and everything. I mean, it doesn't matter how big you are. I'm sure people in here right now have had that mm -hmm. one guy already in there in in their uh, chat doing things. Because the week after I I actually uh, I'm the week after I talked to you the first time, I had mm -hmm. somebody play a game. I was playing a public game, and because of this, I didn't really play a public game uh, for a while. Uh, but this person said the N word in chat and i had five people in the game there's only six people overall and this guy was just the odd man out i already knew the voices of everybody else because we've been playing for, for for months at the time and we we decided hey man that's not cool we're going to take you out because some people are here streaming or whatever he's just like no probably one of your friends said it and i was just like no no but then this guy ends up coming into uh my channel because he figures out that i was streaming um mm -hmm. and then he starts just because Twitch doesn't, I mean, everybody knows they don't yep. have the greatest moderation for slurs and stuff like that. And he was it's just, just spamming the N word. Uh, yeah, it's impossible because he's just putting ones where there was, like, he, you just change it a little bit and it's impossible to yep. block all per, uh, permutations of the same word. Like, it's impossible to because people can just put in, like, uh, uh, symbols or whatever they want to and it, Exactly. It's impossible. I, and I, I'm well aware of that from the development perspective. You know, I, I work with, uh, for instance, a game like Run Prop Run, which is a free-to-play multiplayer title. And we have chat in the game. And uh, it's it's a it's an issue we know is in there, but mm, nothing we can do so much about. You know what I mean? Yeah, you can, even, you can even see this You'll problem. You'll be able to spell something out. Yeah, you can even see this problem in Destiny. I actually ran into somebody who was playing some public matches in Destiny, and this guy's name was uh, Piglet, but obviously not with the P. You know you know where it's going on that. Like, it's a yes. horrible name. Um, and he... You don't even know how long he probably had that name. I mean, me and everybody, yeah. that, I, everybody that was watching me reported him, but... I mean, he probably still has it because it's probably just sliding under the radar and that's why he has it. Nobody really, it's not exactly the word and Destiny doesn't have the time or money because they're already trying to fix everything else. And it's just a problem with everything when it comes down to development and moderation. It is impossible to, to it is, it block is everything. Because uh, I have uh, an interesting example of it. There's a uh, Battlefield YouTuber and his name is Nikaman. N-I-C-C-A-M-A-N, right? And uh, he got banned for something because they thought that he was using the N-word in his name. And it's actually his, his like, last name. Oh, jeez. You know what I mean? So, you know, like, we can create these filters that, that try to, like, shield us from the F-bomb and, and all these other places. But w we can never say that in some other country, because he's, he's not even, like, an American, right? So he's in another country. But in, in some other country, in some other dialect, what does that mean? And then eventually we just, we have these issues. So oh, yeah. it is, it's is darn near impossible to figure this out. And, and the idea really is, is like, yes, you're right. Um, and, and it's a good, good thing to bring up is that you, you will face trolls at any size that y you have, uh, your channel. And, uh, uh, um, there's definitely do's and don'ts about it. You know, and if you want to jump into that, we can, or I mean, maybe there's another if you, if you want to, if if you want to jump into that, I mean, don't feed the trolls is like the biggest thing I can say. So, Never feed the um, trolls. Uh, over the years, um, just through my experience as a content creator and also experience uh, as someone who builds communities for video games on um, Discord or, you know, Twitter and things like that, um, I really come to know that I don't have time for it. Um, they get the biggest boot as fast as they can. Because I started my career as a person who wanted to help people. And now that I've gotten older, I shifted my thinking to saying, look, I can't help everyone. And this is one of those things, like, I, I look back and I reflect, like, well, why did I want to be a teacher? And I, and I taught in the inner city. I grew up in the inner city in New Jersey. I wanted to give back to the community. I want to help those kids who don't have a mom or dad at home or something. And maybe they have just grandma raising them or something. Who knows? Drug-related crimes. There's a lot of stuff that I've seen. 
But eventually, I've I've realized that while being a good-hearted person and trying to help everyone, it is impossible to help everyone. And when I when I first came into contact with people who are trolls, I almost felt their pain. A person who goes out and wants to harm others is someone who doesn't know how to deal with his own pain, and he passes it on. Because nobody should be with pain. Like, I learned through my own life, everything that's painful to me, I learned how to deal with it, sit, think about it, and release it. But I know enough not to release it onto others. But some people don't know that difference. And these are the trolls on the internet. Um, because a happy person doesn't spend time um, commenting on some video game because now they have uh, girls in it because he doesn't like that in World War II there were no girls. Nobody's in their right mind a happy person will spend time on that because they have other happy things to do. Maybe that their mom's birthday is coming up and they'll think about that or you know their best friend wants to hang out and have a beer. So they don't even cross their mind to go and complain about something. And so my shift, my shift in mentality changed from feeling bad for people like that and trying to help and be there for them and all that to realizing, look, we all have to learn the hard way. And the best lesson is learned on your own. You're really not doing anyone a favor by, by being nice to them when they're being dirtbags to you to, oh, try yeah. to, to try to change them. You're not doing anybody a favor. You see someone's being a dirtbag, my greatest advice to the game developers or anybody I meet, content creators, cut them off, have a nice day, block, not interested. I You're mean, I've already, I've, already ban I've already banned and like permanently banned a friend who constantly asked me to let them back in. But no, you're like making fun of somebody that was one of my followers for being uh, LGBTQ. I'm going to ban you. Everyone deserves to have their life and live their life the way that they want to live it, uh, no matter what you believe. So, I mean, I'm the ban. Right. The ban hammer is indiscriminate. Indiscriminate. Yep, and you're you're always better off not not dealing with other people's problems because <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I have plenty of my own. <laughs> And my day is filled with problems and I need to solve them, whether they are my, my company uh, or friendships or relationships. And I don't need, I don't have time for someone else's. <laughs> yeah. When, when people are bringing in problems, I mean, at least mute them. If you know that they're not normally like that, at least mute them and be like, Hey, this is not the time or place. You can DM me if, if something's really going on, but it obviously it's up to your discretion. If, if you know the person, they're just having a bad day, mute them. And then tell them, hey, just DM me. This is not the place. Uh, yep. But if you don't know the person, obviously the best thing is a follower is not worth the worth the trouble. I promise you. Follower is not where you want to go anyways. You want the viewer average. You want uh, the the chatters. And if some if it just one follower follows you and then causes problems, they're not worth it. Because they're going to lower the viewer average, they're going to lower the chatters, and that's the what actually matters. Yep. You can have exactly. you can have a hundred million followers, but if you only have one person watching your live, it doesn't matter. No, yep. in, no influencer program is going to want you because you're not reaching enough people. You have a bunch of dead of dead accounts that aren't watching you. Uh, you have yep. no poll. You have no say. So what you want a quality community, and Twitch is one of the easiest places to make a quality community, um, because of all the like. Even right, even though it's there's no discoverability, we can narrow that out. But once you get mm -hmm. the people there, Twitch has just so much more availability to have building a community because of the high interaction time, uh, all the stuff that you can have for interactions. You don't really have that over on YouTube yet. But they're, right. I mean, with the most recent announcement, they're getting ready to have raids, even though they can't call them raids. We call it something else. They're going to have uh, sound uh, sound things and a bunch of other stuff. So YouTube's playing catch up on that aspect. Um, really? And that's going to yeah, be a know, big thing, game changer. But Facebook's still kind of, it's working its way. You know, the, Facebook is doing a great and amazing things. And, you, you know, you mentioned a friend of mine that In is the metaverse. A, a great content creator, you know, uh, Stone Mountain. Oh yeah, he, Love. He, he's like the the face of what is Facebook. I, I imagine you know content creation. 
and he's very su- been very successful in that area. And um, the one thing I'll say is uh, the biggest detractor from like YouTube being a community is that um, you're in YouTube. Like if you ever looked at the comments, people don't really talk to each other. You don't go on mm-hmm. someone's page and try to find like, whoa, is Sarge America here again? Like, no. But when you go on a, a Twitch page, you get to know the people who watch. And I would see you and, you know, like my, my name is always in red. Your name is always in blue. And I'd be like, oh, it's such America. I could, I could see you. And I know your icons next to you. It feels like you. And that's the, the, the secret to success of Twitch has always been the chat. And people right. who try to um, copy Twitch have not figured that out. Um, best example was Mixer. Mixer tried to compete with Twitch. And they didn't really realize that it's all about the chat. And their chat was horrendous, filled with weird things and pictures and emoji things. Just And the worst part was that your username was always blue and the icon next to you was always generic. And so it's like nobody could find a friend to hang out with there because there was no identifier. Yeah. Um, but I, I do feel like we are getting off topic and, and I would like oh, to yeah. just return to... Uh, what we were saying so this way we can keep a good format for people who are listening yeah sorry i have adhd and most people know that I, i'm terrible with that <laughs> no i can sit here and talk all about the industry and anything oh yeah it really it, 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 this is a very passionate thing for me as well so i, I understand entirely um but uh i think i think we did kind of narrow out trolls and stuff like that I, and there was a part that i wanted to bring up and i actually saved it real quick but uh, you never know what your impact is on other people when you're streaming. And I just want to put this out there because Echo uh, mentioned his impact on other people, meeting a friend in, uh, or a viewer and friend in Lisbon, so many other things. You have no idea what you're putting out there, how it's going to impact somebody. It can actually save somebody's life. I've had four, I've had four messages, one an email, uh, and the rest on Discord saying that I actually prevented them from taking their own life. And that is enough for me to justify doing this for the rest of my life. And you have no idea how many other people you're helping that won't actually tell you that you that you helped them. So just keep sure. doing what you're doing and keep keep at it. But obviously, if something's not working, try to fix it. Um, but for the to get back on topic with the questions and everything, what are some things that you, your, as a content creator, would do differently if you were to be put back in your shoes uh, eight years ago? What would you start off and how would you do it? And honestly, what mistakes would you not make again? I think that the biggest thing is to plan. Plan for success. Because if you plan for success, you will reach success. If you're just turning on the stream you know, just to get a few more followers and grow. And then, you know, yeah, but if I keep growing, yeah, but if I have 100,000 followers, I will have great deals and I will have success and the Lamborghini is going to be parked outside, right? Um, no. Did you plan for that Lamborghini? What did you do to have that Lamborghini? You know, did you notice that your revenue is low? So maybe you should have uh, new merch. Get a, get a great artist. Did you go out and talk to him? Um, I think there's a lot of, I think this is a systematic thing of even, I saw it as an educator and, and, and I had felt it myself because albeit the drive for success is very limited these days. People rather wait for success rather than go grab it. It's a weird concept, but I would recommend people start starting now and looking to succeed is sit down, get a piece of paper, and plan that success. In this many months, I will have this many followers. In this many months, I will have conversations with this many companies. I will have this many sponsors. And chase it. Work hard. Get connected. Create a LinkedIn. Create these other things that are industry standards. And chase it. Because when I started content creation, I mean, there was no, like, um, clear path of, like, how do you become a successful streamer? It was just, like, people who were streaming a lot, and eventually people followed a lot, 
eventually somebody messaged you from a company you're like oh cool yeah i would love to go play that game it was super unprofessional but now it is way more professional and the opportunity then with this new change to professionality gives you i speak to some influencers who have twenty thousand followers fifteen thousand followers and they're super professional so if you're sitting there you have to think about yourself and say wow the competition is professional i'm not I see people who have 25,000 followers who have quality content, quality merch, quality business sense, quality business representatives that equal a streamer who has 150,000 followers. If you put that all into perspective, then you can see that this person who's 25,000 today and has all this in place is caring about all this he's going to succeed because he's planning for success. So the biggest advice I would have to myself and or people who are in a similar situation starting up is um, sit down and plan that success. And when you don't reach your goals, because most of us don't reach our goals, right? 95% of my goals are not reached because, oh, X, Y, and Z. Like, oh, man, yeah, instead of actually working all Friday on a, on a new trailer for one of our one of our games, I got slammed and uh, I had to fix my car because, yeah, maybe I got a flat tire. So life derails us, but we make adjustments and we need to continue to chase goals and set those goals appropriately. Yeah, yeah that's that's perfect. That is actually outstanding. And you you did hit the the next subject right on the head but i also want to put in there real quick a lot of a lot of streamers don't want to get into tiktok and all these other like huge parts of the industry uh which would also increase their exposure because they're afraid of i don't have the time to really put into put in the effort but when it comes to tiktok youtube and all these other things the effort is record and post you're you're st just starting out. When you're just starting out, all you gotta do is just hit the record and then post it. You just have to move forward and then incrementally get better slowly but surely. Uh, it's a mathematical equation. As long as you're improving slowly, you're going to become great. Uh, you don't start off being at the level of Stone Mountain or you or other people on YouTube. You have to slowly but surely get there. And you're hurting yourself by not just making that recording of you playing your game and then just posting it. You're hurting yourself. And then same thing for TikTok. Even if you can't dance, whatever, do something. Do something, put yourself out there because you're marketing yep. yourself. And that's the important part. And then when you actually don't get successful yourself. at that, yeah, don't never limit yourself. When you actually learn to market yourself good and become a great marketer of your own stuff, other people will be looking at you to be, hey, you want to influence. I just got invited to being a part of the TikTok Creator Fund and then the next day part of the TikTok Marketplace. So I, I'm getting influencer requests and stuff like that on TikTok. It's insane. You're limiting yourself by not just posting just post what you record don't be you're going to be your biggest critic don't hurt yourself by just saying oh it's not good enough just post it you don't know if it's gonna be good enough even if, even if it sucks and people don't like it you learn from it your failures is how you learn and it's how you adjust and you're right. never going to know what's going to work until you just post um, you know the, the the point is is um just as you said uh, you have to look for success in order to succeed. Success doesn't find you. Exactly. Very rarely does it happen. Um, we fantasize about these things, you know, the overnight successes, people who win a lottery ticket and they're a millionaire and then we buy tickets to be them too. No, man, I, I don't buy any lottery tickets. Never have, never will. I work hard, build what I know, and I put my energy in that. That's it. Yeah. You know? Yep. And I mean, I just started a podcast. I just started all this other stuff. Like the the industry is very fast. There's so many things you can get your get your toes into, get your hands into. You just jump into anything 
and see if it sticks, see if you get good at it, see if it works. And it, at the end of the day, if something works out, like if your YouTube catch, catches off, uh, your Twitch can become your secondary. You no longer have to stream, yep. and you got the success on another platform, and you can supplement that success with your with your stream. You can use the stream to be like, hey, this, we're going to have community nights on stream now, or whatever it may be. Shoot for success and see where you land. Um, that's that's the my biggest my biggest advice of right now is just seriously see where you land, yep. try everything, but don't run yourself dry. Uh, my biggest thing is add one new thing a month. Once you get used to a schedule, um, add another thing. Uh, obviously, keep yourself in the same schedule and time frame so you don't increase your time of working. But you got to be so a good good advice is you have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Once you get comfortable True. with what you're what you're doing, make yourself uncomfortable again, and just keep you doing know what's, over and what's over. interesting about that is is uh, only people who who've gone through life being comfortable at some point and had to reassess their situation understand what you just said. It's a very hard thing to hear from someone yeah. else. Hey, you're, you're being comfortable, man. Like, get out of your comfort zone. Do something. Build a company. Build a Twitch channel. Build a YouTube channel. You know, you, most people don't understand that until they've actually had that feeling. Maybe sitting down, home, depression, and they're just like, wait a minute. I'm not going to fold. I'm going to do something. Well, what is it? I'm not going to be comfortable anymore. Because when you're comfortable, life goes by. It's like that movie Click. You, your your life just is fast forwarded and the best parts of life are when you're not on fast forward you shouldn't go to your job and just you know flip a burger because that's what you're on you're on autopilot if you feel like you have more to give to this world i i enjoy a burger you know someone has to do it but personally i can't because i have more to give to this world and i've met many talented people who still don't know that yet um what, what I would say is uh, amount of time that's spent on different content creation um, in today, like, honestly, if somebody was streaming just two hours a night, I'd be like, cool, that's enough. You don't have to go over two hours because what are you really missing out on? Oh, man, an extra hour and I'll have extra 10 followers or 20 followers. Like, I don't know. Just make that two hours awesome. I'd rather watch somebody for two awesome hours than, you know, six bland hours. Yeah, then edit it, put it some clips onto TikTok, put some, uh, put the whole thing onto YouTube with some edits, make it look appealing, put it everywhere, and you're just going to yeah. see much more success than streaming for 12 hours. And I unfortunately had to learn that the hard right. way. Right, because TikTok has discoverability. YouTube has discoverability. Twitch, no. I mean, YouTube's, this, so, YouTube's the second largest and most used search engine in the world, so definitely worth yep. it. Uh, if I need to know how to fix uh, something, you know, like uh, uh, my router, the first thing I do is see if anyone's on the YouTube who's already done it, you know? <laughs> so, um, I believe that. Yeah, so... We've aren't we've already you you kind of already put into uh, into the air uh, how you think the industry has changed uh, since you took your hiatus with how more it's how it's become more professional um, on all this. But is there any other things that you think has kind of changed within the industry since you've taken your break? Um. Well, what, in terms of content creation, um, I just think everyone's getting better at it. And the quality is going up. So people entering now are up against higher, higher competition. You know, if you're, if you're streaming the same time slot that, I don't know, Dr. Disrespect is or uh, same, same time, time slot as Shroud, you know, like you're up against these guys. And these guys are now well-known names. So the only thing that they may have going bad for them is at some point you do become so big, you're, you're quote-unquote lame you know like i watched the movie free guy and i saw oh, some I streamers it. there right <laughs> to me it was cringe but that's just me 
because it's a comedy movie and these high level streamers did not even make it funny. Oh yeah. The the streamer parts weren't the greatest. Cameo. The the cameos weren't the greatest, except for Chris uh uh Chris Evans cameo. That was actually kind of funny. Yeah, or, that was funny. That was that was, was funny. a joke. Yeah. And oh come on. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And the rest of the the rest of the content there was just Twitch names that got paid to be in a movie and they're just they're just like, oh my God, did you see that? And they're like, dude, what? Okay. Well, it completely yeah. fell flat, in my opinion. But that that's a plus for young creators. It's just that because even the big guys, yeah, they have all these fans and everything else, but they become so, so famous and well known that eventually it's just like, ah, I don't feel like watching him. I mean, and that's cool. It might be a good time to get into YouTube now for everybody that's here because they're actually removing the counters for the dislike buttons and the like buttons. And then later on, the subscriber amount, like people won't be able to see how many subscribers you have anymore or how many what? dislikes or likes on a video. You'll still be able to see it and adjust your content accordingly. So don't let that scare you. But if you're they're doing it because small creators, they want to be able to give them the same same amount in the uh they want to level the playing field right? they want to level the playing field they want to get the algorithm to be truly just the algorithm which is smart but also because it is smart because if you look at the dislike button people just go on the dislike button just hit the dislike, dislike button you look at markiplier yep. there's nothing to dislike about his stuff there really isn't he's funny um he's got yep. a smooth voice there's there's nothing there's nothing wrong with his content. People just go there because he's big, like you said, and people just don't like mm-hmm. greatness. People don't like when people are succeeding and they want to take it yeah. out. Um, I mean, obviously, it's going to be detrimental I, when there's totally actually understand. a bad video, but yeah. I totally understand that the dislike button shouldn't have a number because then it just becomes a trolliness like when Call of Duty had their trailer and <laughs> everybody just went there to dislike <laughs> it to be like, wow, the most disliked thing ever, you know? Yeah. Um, uh but you know not having it on the up one that's so weird that's like okay the dislikes the first one they're gonna they're still planning on the like but the dislikes already done oh yeah they're doing it in increments they're trying it out yeah they're probably that's a smart thing you don't want to deploy something that drastic all is all at once um but i get it you know i look at the industry right you look at the video game industry video game industry is already doing things like this because you the new battlefield just came out yesterday and there's no scoreboard at the end that doesn't show you how many kills and deaths that's upsetting and, and things that that people have it's upsetting for me and you because we're fps guys and that's man i would spend night overnight to just be the top dog i want to kill 100 people die 10 times and i want everybody to see it and then everybody would be like oh man i think he's cheating and i just i'm not i'm just that good and it this is what inside motivated me to constantly play and get better and stronger and faster smarter and um now we're just kind of soft right we're just everyone feels good playing games right and that's the the point is is within game design this makes sense because they want the user experience they want anybody to who picks up and dies 10 times and gets four kills and then later at the just end when he's like, oh, how did i do yeah he just want him to enjoy it exactly well now we live in this part where this is even going into content creation. They just want everyone to enjoy content creation. Everyone's getting thumbs up. Sure. I mean, um, I mean, it makes sense. And it also, and it, it, uh, it inspires people and brings people to want to put their videos up because now they don't have that uh, burden or that over sensing dread that they're going to have dislikes and people are going to see that. So it also helps out YouTube because there's going to be more posts and in the end, more ad revenue. So, I yep. mean, it works out for them and everybody else. It works out exactly for them, for sure. Um, there's only one one issue that I see is, is how does it work out for the individual who, who gets this um, positive reinforcement? You know, you look at platforms like TikTok and you put up a video and you have a 1 million views. And you feel amazing. You're like, oh my God, it's 1 million views. But the video is five seconds and someone had it on repeat, you know, for like a week because they were too lazy to turn off their phone and it gave you 10,000 views. You know what I mean? That's the point. They're not real yeah. views, not all of them. And the platform, they know that. 
TikTok knows what they're doing. They, they want to report a very big number to you because you, they want you to feel like, oh my God, I got a million views. I'm going to make 10 more videos and I'm going to yeah. get better. It motivates you. Sure, if you can turn it into something and amazing, great. But we also, I look at it from perspective when I was a teacher and years ago you asked the kid, hey, what do you want to be? I want to be a fireman. I want to be a soldier. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a nurse. You know, kids have these realistic expectations. Now you ask a kid, what do you want to be? I want to be a YouTuber. And I'm like, hmm, holy shit. We can't all be YouTubers now, can we? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, yeah, <laughs> of course, not everybody. I mean, in the end, if you if you have a job, if you're a mechanic and you want to put up your uh, your tidbits on, on YouTube, I mean, that's, that's a whole other thing too. Um, right. So you can get a good job and then put things up. Uh, on youtube but yeah that's why i tried it i was a teacher too and i also we have very similar teaching paths i taught in the the uh the inner city of phoenix for a while there and uh yeah the the amount of kids that would say i want to become famous or i want to be an actor i'm just like well you can do uh, what I would always tell them is you can you can go to YouTube you can put your stuff on YouTube but you're gonna have to be you're gonna have to be really reasonable you're gonna have to have a job and then you have to put you have to be very um if you for for example you see like these uh my wife is pregnant we're expecting in May um and there's like these nice. YouTube videos thank you uh thank you there's uh there's like these YouTube videos uh, for like working out in the second trimester, like super, super fine targeted, uh, YouTube channel. That's perfect. If you find something that you're good at, make a channel super targeted on that and run with it. And if you're also here and you're a streamer, um, and you want to do that and plus this, uh, plus your actual, uh, streaming, you can have two YouTube channels. All you just need to have is two emails. It's super easy, uh, super and then you can have both of them like shout each other out and have the channels and like end screens and stuff. There's so many ways to be successful streaming. If you have another job implement it, I promise you yeah. um, implement it. I, I guess, I guess to just kind of say like, you know, I, I, the fact that these big companies are changing their um, websites to keep people on there. The only the only worry I have is when you look at like what recently happened with Facebook is these people oh, are smart. Yeah. They make the algorithms. They know what they're doing, and they knew that negativity spread like wildfire over there. But it became uh, they it gave them so many impressions. It affected their bottom line so well that they made so much money off of advertising to these negative people because they're showing them negativity that they want to keep seeing. This is the worry, is. YouTube is going to remove sub counts, remove these likes, dislikes, Twitch is going to do all sorts of stuff as well. And at the end, we're being marketed. We're being marketed by these companies. And what I wonder is how much power these companies actually have. You see what I mean? That's my only wonder. And I don't think it's something me and you can answer here, but it's an interesting thing to bring up when you know, this is the trend that they're going, or even video game industries going in and saying like, hey, you know, it's a first person shooter game, but everyone's going to have fun, right? And then you just kind of look at and say, well, we'll see how that all rolls out. Well, I I do want to get one question uh, out there, and then I'll let you uh, talk about Tilt uh, Tiltify Games and get that that uh that a good platform and then we'll ask, answer some questions uh so raise your hands if you uh, know how to do that it should be down at the bottom of your screen and we'll be getting to your questions uh, uh shortly really but do you think it's actually easier to succeed before or after the pandemic so uh easier to do what do you think it's either uh, sorry i kind of like fell off a cliff at the end there uh, do you think it's easier to succeed in content creation before the pandemic uh, started or after? Uh, I'm the type of person who says that every day becomes easier to succeed because technology moves forward. You just have to grasp what the new technology is. Every, every day there's new trends. Because we're talking entertainment. Um, what made me big is not going to make you big anymore. 
because entertainment evolves. What's the new trend? What's cool today is not what was cool when I started. It's what helped me become a streamer. So in while that's a quote unquote possibly bad thing, it's a bad thing for me because I have to keep up. It's a good thing for you because if you're in tune with your ear to the ground and you know what's happening, what's cool, you have a better opportunity to succeed than any other streamer or YouTuber that's out right now. You just go with the trends, you know? There's always something new in entertainment. That's the basis of it. You're never going to be entertained if you're always shown the same thing, right? So, Definitely. Um, I, think, I think you can succeed today way better than I could succeed yesterday. Yeah, 